Well, hello, everybody. It is Heidi Kaisend at Hen and Chick Studio in Conrad, Iowa. And we are super excited um, to have you join all of all of you join us this evening for our uh, Facebook Live co Creative Conversation with Brenda Riddle. And uh, we're going to be introducing her in just a second. I'm making sure that we've got everything um, going here and that everything is working live. Um, because, of course, we love all this technology, but I think um, we've got um, everything in place. So uh, officially, I would like to in, um, introduce you to Brenda Riddle and invite Brenda to join this creative conversation. Good evening, Brenda. How are you doing? Hi, Heidi. I'm good. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me today. I love being here. Oh, well, we're glad that you're here. And, you know, Brenda, you and I, of course, I've known who you are um, in the industry for um, as long as I think as long as you've been designing things uh, as, as, as we see each other at Quilt Market and that, but mm -hmm. we have not had a lot of opportunity to work together. Right. And um, in the past month, you, one of your projects was featured in our Feathered Friends program, which is our monthly subscription program. And I just know that our um, Feathered Friends subscribers loved um, getting to have one of your projects in our Absolutely. newsletter. So thank you for being a part of that. Absolutely. Thank you. As I say, it's always fun to work with um, different designers and, um, you know, and to know their, their, learn more about their style and everything. Yeah. So because we're not super familiar with you, mm -hmm. let's start with some of the basics. Can you tell us um, where you live and, um, and a little bit about your, your business? Sure. Before I start, you might hear a few little what we call borks. In the background, I've got my puppy, Emmy, in the other room, and she's supposed to have her Kong, but so if you hear that, it's just, you it's know just what? The noise, it's just the music of the house. It's, well, I was going to say, it's just like we're at home because we have a dog that does that. And if I was at home, she'd probably be jumping on my lap trying to, oh, yeah. to get up here to see you. So, you know, that's we don't she, think a thing, we don't think yeah, a thing about that. That's why she's on the other side because otherwise she'd, she'd want to have her face right up here. So, and, and well, we should, we, we do need to know what kind of a dog is she? You, you know, she's say? a rescue. I, and I got her just at the beginning of, um, of, you know, lockdowns. I got her in 2020, summer of 2020. She is, I was told she's a poodle terrier mix. And supposedly her mom was a poodle and her dad was a terrier. My vet now is wondering, it's the game of what kind of terrier is she? Cause she just kept getting taller and taller. And um, she's only 25 pounds. She has very long legs. So we think it's schnauzer and poodle or what? Well, uh, what is it? Wire Fox Terrier and Poodle. We can't, whatever Terrier has the long legs, but she has well, Terrier. Fine. So that is the, that has been the joy and the uh, growing for me <laughs> as having a dog that has Terrier in them, but oh. no, she's a doll. She's a cutie pie. And so, but it's, it's been fun. And she likes, she just found out recently she has a voice and so she uses it sometimes. So we're, we're, we're trying to learn when to, when to use it and when to not. So anyway. Oh, as with all dogs. Okay. Yeah. Well then let's go anyway. back to quilting. Sure. So tell us a little bit about, about you and, okay. and where your business is. Sure. I, I live in, I grew up in Southern California and I lived in different parts of California and then also in the twin cities. I went to college up there. Um, but then I moved here to Arizona and I'm in, I'm north of Tucson, south of Phoenix, in the foothills of the, uh, of some mountains. So we're kind of high elevation, um, high desert elevation. And I, so it's called Oro Valley and I love it. I only plan to be here for about two, three years, and it's now 31 years later. So I must like how well, that works out, isn't it? <laughs> it does. Yeah, I know. It's it's just amazing. And um, so I I have lived here and I've taught here. Um, I used to do interior design, worked with an architect, um, and I wanted to go and get my teaching certificate. I had gone overseas and done some trips and I wanted to go back overseas, but groups don't really need interior designers overseas. So 
got my teaching certificate. That's what brought me here and um, ended up that didn't pan out the country I was going to go to after I got my certification. It got too dangerous for females to be there. So God said, nope, you're going to be here. And I found a school and was teaching, stayed there for 15 years. And then the design started taking over and I was teaching art and design. And so that just little by little took over. And, and um, I started um, my company and the company was called Acorn Quilt and Gift Company because I didn't know if I wanted to open a quilt shop <laughs> or design. And I went to a market. I had a friend who was so sweet and she was encouraging me to do market. She had done it and had a little company. And so I did a trip to market just to see what quilt market was. And oh my. And it was, you know, it's just for those of you who, if you could ever go to a quilt market, well, I think quilt festival in Houston is probably just like it. It's like, it's just like a fantasy land of quilting. It's just amazing. And it is sensory overload. The first time you go, it really is. There's so much amazing things to see. But I, I then um, did market the next year. And I had uh, that first year, though, I met Barb and Alma. And that was like, okay, life can end now because I've met my heroes. And I also talked to Lynn Hagmeyer. And she gave me the great advice of pick one design you know she asked it, she asked me if I was married and I said no I'm not she has you know she goes well my husband Robert helps me <laughs> and she said you know if if you've got somebody to help you but otherwise pick one because doing both is a lot and she knows mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she doesn't both and so um, I chose designing and it's just been kind of starting the design kept taking over my class load got less and, um, and so that's, that's kind of my little history of it. Yeah. And so, and, and so at some point you, you now just go by Brenda Riddle design. Yeah. I correct? started at the acorn quilt. Number one, it's just a really long name for that. And, um, I started designing, um, needlework as well. And then when I started designing fabrics, um, it was easier. So I just made an umbrella company of Brenda Riddle designs because I also do some design work, some graphic design work for some organizations local here. And so it just, I needed to have that business wise. And so it still kind of shows up on patterns because some people know me from that, but it's slowly kind of getting edged away just for simplicity. But I just started designing needlework and the Acorn Quilt and Gift Company didn't make sense on cross stitch and things like that, so. Yes. And yeah. I do know that um, the link to your website is in mm -hmm. our comments. Okay. And so if people are wanting to um, visit your website, we've got the link in the comments so that they can, um, they can go there. Okay. Um, so when you started designing quilts, uh -huh. um, did you immediately know what style you were going to design? I mean, <clears throat> when I look at the I'm going to say the overview of your mm -hmm. quilts there, you certainly have a particular style. I would, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, what do you do? How do you describe the style of quilts yeah. that you, you create? You know, my, um, I, when I first started, I tried a little bit of everything and you kind of do, <laughs> but my, you can always tell what my comfort zone is and the stuff that's, and I've learned to, you know, love your lane, just, love, love your lane and, and, and own your lane. And mine is more of a cottage style, a, a very soft style. Um, I like light backgrounds. I have designed some quilts that had dark backgrounds or some wool applique and, you know, those never really flew. And so, and they do fly, they're great, but when, when other designers do them, but for some reason I've learned that, you know, when I do what I love and what I want to fill my home with, that's where I get the response. And my, my look is based on, um, and it's always in my little bio of when I was little, both of my grandmas quilted. And so when I was little, the linen closet at our house um, up on the top had quilts that my grandma, my mom's mom had made and she had passed away. So my mom was careful with them. She didn't, they weren't utility quilts. 
And so, but she would pull them down when we were sick or when we needed a snuggle or something like that. And so I had very comforting relationships with that. And so that's the look I wanted. And all of them happened to have light backgrounds. Um, they were always soft and comfy. And that's really the look I want for all of my quilts. And so that's, that's and then it, and it overflows into my fabrics. And the quilt that's hanging behind you is, yeah. is truly that style. Um, when you said cottage, I'm like, oh, that's the perfect word um, <laughs> to is. describe. Yeah, to describe that style because there's a vintageness to it. Mm -hmm. And you were doing cottage long before it was ever, ever stopped. Yeah. Um, you know, and now I think a, a lot of people um, with that um, more white background, light mm -hmm. background, yeah. and then those softer um, shades of colors mm -hmm. and stuff. And yeah. you've been doing that for a long time. Tell us about the quilt that's hanging behind you. Sure. Well, before I do that, I just want to say, yes. yeah, I always giggle when I hear when the term that came up of low volume quilts and oh, how great. And I'm like going, I was low volume before low volume was popular. So absolutely. Um, yeah. So this is called Seedlings and Seedlings is one of the quilts from my first collection with Moda. When I started designing fabrics with Moda, it was called Ambleside. And this was one of the, so this is one of the very first quilts I designed with my, um, with the Ambleside collection that I did. And it's, it's got a little bit of applique inside, but mostly it's just pieced and it's, you know, it's perfect for a snuggle quilt. It's perfect to throw on a bigger table, a wall. So do you. Okay, a couple of questions, because I think these are things that people always have curiosity. So you say that you like them soft and, yeah. and cozy, you know, comfortable. So do you pre-wash your fabric? I don't, but the very first thing I do once I finish binding, and I'm a hand binder, it's part of what I love about quilts. It's It takes time, but I make the time because it just is a connection with my grandmas and all of that. I love it. But as soon as I put that final stitch, those go, my quilt goes in the washing machine. So yeah. I, I run it through the washing machine and the dryer so that it, it has more of a vintage look, you know, the day it was finished. <laughs> I love that. I I'm love kind that. Of opposite. You can always tell my quilts at market because they're always the wrinkly, the, the washed ones where not everybody does that. And so it's like, nope, mine go in there no matter what. Okay. So I'm sure somebody will ask. So let's, <laughs> let's give them the information when you wash uh -huh. and dry. How right. do you do that? Cold do water. On, yeah, I do cold water. I will usually, depending on the time I have, sometimes I have to be done because sometimes with market, you're finishing things just before you leave. Um, I've actually used a, I've used a hotel washing machine once. Um, that was scary. That's cutting it a little <laughs> close, Brenda. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and it was a little scary. I thought, Brenda, this might not have been a good idea. Um, but I will, if I have time, I'll put a tiny, tiny bit of laundry soap in there, just the tiniest bit, just to get off the sizing, because fabric comes with a sizing on it. And so it just immediately makes it even a little softer. And then I'll throw it into a kind of a medium. I don't put them in hot dryers but I'll put them in a medium dryer. So at least it will, you know, not take hours to dry. Mm -hmm. And do you worry about colors bleeding or anything? Oh yeah. You... Oh yeah. Well, and then a little color catcher goes in there. I not... We all love, we all love those shout color not, catchers. You know, with my quilts, because my fabrics are pretty low volume, I don't have to worry about that so much, but it has happened. Um, and companies are really, really good now about no bleeding, but once in a while that it can come out. So just for safety. Yeah. Color yes. catches are golden. You know, um, several years ago, the freezer Reynolds freezer paper changed their boxes to say, um, something about perfect for craft supplies. I think shout color catchers should have some kind of a quilt no quilters label on that, on the side of yeah. it. Because if I, if I could have a nickel for every time I've sent people to go buy shout color catchers, yeah. um, you know, I mean, it's, it's just one of those products that everybody should have. It's in the, and it's in the laundry aisle. If anybody is wondering where that, where that yeah. is in the, in the grocery store. So yeah, a lot of people don't know what they are, which is, you know, as a quilter, it's like, oh, really? All you need is one time that it happens. And it, I think it does happen at least once. Oh yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. 
That's all you and need. And I tend to I tend to use like red a lot, like mm-hmm. lots of red. Yeah. And I throw it in, I throw a, a shout color catcher in every time I wash that this one particular quilt. Yeah. And every time it comes out pink. And yet I look at the quilt and go, I can't, I can't see where it's bleeding. You know what I mean? I like where it's it's not going, but it works out really well. Yeah. It works out really well. So I love that look too. And oh, we should also ask, what are you putting in between your layers? What's your batting of choice? You know, okay. So I live in Arizona and I like to use my quilts. So I do like to have a quilt on the bed that either it's just a coverlet or a set. But um, so I love Quilters Dream um, and they, cause they have different lofts that you can get. And I get the request, which is the thinnest loft they use. They okay. have. And I've checked with my, you know, when I send it off to be long armed, I check with them. Are you okay with that? And they're all like, yep, we're fine. And so for the most part, for my own, I use that. And because for me, it's like, if I want to hang it on the wall, it's less heavy. If I want to put it on my bed and use it, it's less heavy, which even in the winter, um, you know, it, we get cold and we get snow once in a while, but um, yeah, so I, that's my favorite and I'll, but Quilter's Dream has just been one that I've really, really liked. I need to experiment more, but it's hard when you have something you really like. That's great. Well, you and I certainly have um, several things in common. And one of them being that uh, my grandmother taught me to quilt. Yeah. Um, And so I love to hear that your grandmother, you had two grandmothers, it sounds like that must have been instrumental in teaching you. Mm -hmm. Um, What kinds of things do you um, remember that they taught you? Um, uh, Were they stitching with machines at that point? For example, my, my grandmother enjoyed the hand stitching. Yes. And so, um, she never, she did everything by hand, not that machines, I mean, she got a machine at one point, but she just didn't enjoy using it. Yeah. She enjoyed the handwork. You know, what kinds of things did your grandmothers teach you about quilting? Well, you know, everything I have from them is hand pieced. And I do remember my grandma, my dad's mom had, she actually loved the quilting part the most. And I'm actually the only grandchild who has one of her quilts that she made for them because I had learned about them. I hadn't quilted yet, but I learned about quilts because I was, I was, I was sewing clothes and she did that as well. And so she said, you know, if you want to pick out a quilt, I'll make you one. And so um, I said, okay. And I'm the only grandchild who asked and she was one, unless they ask, she's not just going to make them. They have to want one. So Mm -hmm. I asked, And I picked out, um, I picked out the wedding ring quilt, (laughs) not realizing that it was, you know, one of the more complicated ones to do, especially on by hand. Just a few curves, just a few curves here and there. Little complications. And, uh, but she, she was fine. And I gave her, but because she knew she was going to have somebody else hand piece it (laughs) because she had a friend who did the piecing and she did the quilting. So she was, that was her plan. Her friend got very ill and couldn't do it. So my poor grandma had the hand piece. She hand pieced the whole thing and hand quilted the whole thing. And so I just learned that, you know, I do love hand piecing. When you design, it's really like, I love to do hand applique. Um, I think that's where I got my love for it. And that's one of the downsides of being a designer is you don't have the time to necessarily do all of that. And so um, it's, it's really, really difficult to get it all done. You have to do things machine pieced and sometimes machine applique. And so, but it's also driven me to find a way that how can I machine applique it so that it looks like it was hand applique. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, mm-hmm. so neither of my grandmas knew that I quilted, ended up quilting. They taught me things and, but I never got to actually, they never really realized I would be a quilter. And so well, they know, they, they know. know that's, that's what I, that's what my mom told me one time. She goes, Oh, they know. <laughs> yes. They In fact, absolutely. my very first pattern that I ever designed, it is called for my grandmas. And so Aww. that's the very first quilt I designed. And that's what it was titled. Cause that's, that's who should have gotten the credit. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, let's talk, um, 
So let's talk a little bit about applique for the moment. Okay. I'm going to kind of jump back and forth here a little bit. So when, and we're going to look at a few of your quilts that we have some slides of in okay. a minute. Um, but obviously the one behind you has a little bit of applique in it. And I, I see, I see applique running through your quilts, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot. Right. What is your favorite method of applique? If you, if there was, if time wasn't it, Okay. An issue, you didn't have deadlines. What is your favorite method of applique? Once I, well, I love needle turn. Um, I get a blister though when I do needle turn because I learned, I learned needle turn to do it with a toothpick. How you put a tooth and you put a toothpick in your mouth and you just let it sit there so that it gets a little, the, the sitting right here on the edge, on the edge of your mouth, of your lip, it gets a little moist. And it kind of swells a little bit. So it has more of a texture to it. It's not as slippery. And then you can just turn things under with that toothpick and it's easier, it's less slippery than a needle. And so that's how I learned to applique was needle, needle turn or toothpick turn applique. Okay, so now I gotta stop for a second here okay. because I just finished a needle turn applique and, and we, we won't even discuss what it looks like because <laughs> it was my first attempt, but I figure I won't get better if I don't try. Right. Um, so are you literally using like the toothpick, turning it under and then following behind with your needle? With the needle. Mm -hmm. So you just, and then, so then when you're stitching it, the toothpick kind of goes back. I know it sounds, you know, like, here, you have a tooth. You do, you have a toothpick hanging out of your mouth. But what ended up happening? And so then, and it just makes the turning under easier. And so I love that, Interesting. but I get a blister on my lip from it, from the, the toothpick sitting there. Cause when I start applique, I want to keep going and I'll go for hours. And when you've got a toothpick sitting in your mouth, it just, I would get blisters. So the, the one that I love, is, yeah, I know it's kind of silly. Um, I, I still have the box of, I bought this huge box of toothpicks, wooden toothpicks, so that I could always have it. And I still have the original box of toothpicks that I bought. Um, but I have, um, I learned the freezer paper method. And um, I love that method. As a designer, it's really great because you pre-turn your edges under mm -hmm. and then pull out the, I do the ones where you pull out the freezer paper before putting it down and either glue basting it or pinning it. For a designer, that's so that works so well for me because I can see exactly what the block is gonna look like. And okay. that helps me out as I'm designing because if I wanna change something, I can do it then. So I can visualize, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some words here and see if I'm on the right track so that those sure. who are listening can um, you know, get, make sure we're on the same track. So you are, let's just say you're gonna applique a circle. Mm -hmm. So you're cutting a circle out of freezer paper, right? And then you're cutting a circle out of fabric that is how much larger than that piece of freezer paper or rough? It, it depends about between an eighth and a quarter inch bigger. Okay. And then, um, uh, excuse me here, my screen, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, hesitate there. Uh, my screens are doing something funny. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't losing you. That's all um, right. Okay. Now, um, one of the qualities of freezer paper is that the waxed side mm -hmm. will temporarily um, affix to um, the fabric. So I'm assuming right. you're putting the shiny side down. Actually, I do the, I should have said the freezer paper starch method. So I use, I use, I put okay. the, I put the shiny side onto so, the fabric so that it doesn't move. Okay. So you're on the right side. Right. I'm on the, the wrong the, side. I put, yeah, I put the shiny side on the back side of the fabric okay. and then I brush, I have a little, br I just use a little stencil brush and I do a little bit of liquid starch or sizing. I just paint it around the edges. And then with a tiny little iron, you just iron them over. Very good. And, um, and then that's what you're saying. So then when you do that and you iron it, now you've got a shape. So if you pull that freezer paper out right. before you applique it, Right. Um, those edges are all pressed. Right. There's nothing, nothing that's getting turned under while you're right. actually stitching. Then you just sit down your needle and thread and you do your, your stitch. Exactly. Yeah. So I like that. It's a lot of prep, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of prep, but again, it's done. And then I can just sit 
and really just enjoy the stitching part. And again, I can see exactly what it's gonna look like before I start stitching. Any particular starch you're using? Starch you from know, the grocery store? Yeah, I mean, yeah just, just the, you know, the blue Look stuff at the grocery store, the light blue stuff at the grocery store. I've actually, um, actually, I don't, that's harder to find now. I actually find, I like to use um, Best Press. Yes. I will use that. So I have actually started using, when I do it, I don't always have the time for that, but I will actually use the Best Press for that. And then it doesn't leave a residue of starchy stuff like starch and can. Of, of course, like we carry that at, at yeah. the store here. People love and using that. It smells that. good. Yes, you can get, yes. I, <laughs> I tend to carry the unscented myself oh, okay. <laughs> uh, just because sometimes smells can bother some people. So yeah. I do unscented, but I do know it comes in a variety of scents. Does, so if yeah. somebody wants something. Um, favorite needle for doing needle app, needle turn applique. Uh, you know, any strong... needle doesn't matter. You know, you know, <laughs> I have used an embroidery needle just because I'm so comfortable with an embroidery needle, but it's just so big. A straw needle works just so much better. Um, you kind of have to get used to the length. So I will use a pretty small straw needle just because I don't want it to be super long. long. Um, and I have tried some applique needles. They were okay. I actually like the straw needle better. Okay. So, yeah, but I've used straw needles before and they can be very, very nice. What about thread? Then, You're picking picking colors of thread that that I assume match your fabrics. Yeah, somewhat coordinate. And if I can't, I just have a, a nice light neutral usually because usually my backgrounds are pretty light. And so I will, it's hard to match fabric sometimes. And so, you know, I go through this light green and now I can't find it anywhere. So I, I you know what? I'm one of those use, use what you have when you can't. I was going to say, do you, do you use anything in particular? Or if you have, if you have a spool of this and a spool of that, and a, mm -hmm. is there any I particular really, weight? You thread? know, I love the Aurifil 80 weight, man. Once you try that, that's just because it, the, the thread disappears and that's lovely. But so if I can't get that though, everything else is 50 weight that I have. So, mm -hmm. but the, the 80 weight Aurifil is super, super nice. Okay. Very good. These are all great tips. Um, uh, and then, okay, I was going to say, then once you're done with your applique, do you cut out the back? That was the other thing I was going to ask. No. no, I don't. So if, so it's, if it's going to get quilted through two layers, doesn't matter. Nope. Yeah. Not for I, me. I started cutting out the back of mine. Oh, yeah. And oh, I, I have I to know, say, that, I, my, my heart, I would just, I would have palpitations in the process. Well, and it was, it was, it almost made it messier. I was like, oh, oh I wish okay, I wouldn't have, yeah. I wish I wouldn't have done it and stuff. Anyway, that's a whole, that's my problem, <laughs> not yours. Um, to those who do uh, it, more power to them. Yes. Okay. So um, I love that your tagline is oh. every quilt tells a story. Yeah. Does. Is there, um, is there a particular quilt? that has a story and was one of them on the, was one of them on the slideshow. Now that I say that, did you say one of the quilts yeah, that I had on? Yeah, the one, well, there's a few of them. Um, the one that had the alphabet on it and the- Okay, so let's, let's um, give me a I second. I have it here and I have the other one so I can- Okay, so bear with me as okay. I have to just do a couple things. This is again, I love technology, <laughs> but I have to be able to share my screen and I have to, there we go. Good thing you're doing it, not me. Okay. Well, <laughs> and, and I think it looks like, can you see what I'm seeing? I can see it. Yes. Okay. So it looks like, and so I'm going to go to this quilt. We can come back to the other ones if we want. Sure, there it is. But yeah. This is the, and, and uh, Jamie, if uh, she's watching, I know she is, if she, if she has any issues with not being able to see stuff, she'll let me know. Yeah. But Okay, so Brenda, tell us the story behind this quilt because it okay. is beautiful. Here, I love it. And here she is. She's right here. Um, <gasps> this is called By My Hand. And that was, you know, you asked me about my grandma's. Well, that was kind of one of the ones is By My Hand. Um, when things are made by the hand, it, there's just, you know, you put part of yourself into that. And so that's called By My Hand. And this was designed because I used to do once upon a time, you know, back in the 70s and whenever 80s, cross stitch. 
And back when cross, the first time cross stitch was really popular, or one of the earlier times, it's it's huge back now. And I love the samplers. And so I thought, you know, I would love to make a quilt that kind of pays homage to those wonderful schoolgirl samplers. And so I made this as a, I did everything backwards with this. So I made it a quilt. So I have a quilt about cross stitch samplers. And um, so that's what that one is. And it is, it's just my love of those and my love of the cross stitch. And so then I finally, after a few years later, somebody said, well, where's the cross stitch? Like, so you have a cross stitch that you made that from? I'm like going, no. <laughs> so I then made the cross stitch. So I did oh. it completely backwards. <laughs> so then I charted the cross stitch and did the cross stitch pattern. And there's actually an embroidery pattern too, because I also oh. love embroidery. That was the first needlework I ever did was learned was embroidery. So, so this one has, you know, this one has a, a, a big meaning to me of, of my love of handwork and my love of, you know, whether it's quilting or embroidery or cross stitch. That's one that kind of, that's kind of the, uh, what do I want to say? Um, you know, the, the story quilt of all of that. It's, that just kind of works into it. But a lot of the quilts I design, um, a lot of them have stories, either family members or, um, you know, things I just love or things I've wanted to. I'm seeing a quilt later on down here that is a star. Um, that it's actually on the cover of my book with Martingale, there it is. And I had loved those pointed stars and I wanted to make one, I never did. But then I thought, I wanna do one where it's, that it's not, you know, having to cut on a diagonal and that's made with half square triangles. Wow. And so that's one that's so much easier to piece. And um, so, and I love gingham. If you had to say, okay, you have one design in fabric that you could ever have in the future, I'd pick gingham. And so I wanted to make a gingham star and that's what that one was. So that was a long time coming. And, you know, you don't pick when you, when, when Martin Gale asked me to do a book, I didn't get, to, you don't get to pick what's gonna be on the cover, they do. And cause they do the photo shoots and everything. And this was a quilt I had discussed with my mom for many, many times. And I never designed it, never got around to it. And, um, and I, I kept thinking, you know, that's the quilt I would love to be. And it is the quilt they chose for the cover that they made for the cover. And I thought, oh, my mom would be so excited that this is on the cover. So that's the one, like, I look at that and I think of my mom, because I had many, many discussions with her about how I would love to make a gingham star, but I didn't know how. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. I have to go back. I've got to go back to the sampler for a minute because okay. I have, I have, <laughs> I personally have a question having just done an applique quilt myself. Sure. When I see the, the scrolls on the letters, oh, is right. some of that embroidery and some yeah. of it applique? Yeah. Because of how I wanted to do it, I had to do that. And I, I hope this will work. I'll see if I can, here, we'll put up a, can you see that? Yep. I think that's, I mean, yes, we can see it better. And of course, um, but yeah, so so some of it is embroidered, right? So I and did some of it is applique. The wider, what would be the wider strokes, and then the, where it got thin, those be. I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> yes, you got it. Embroidery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and and I love you. You when you said you were doing low volume before low low volume was um, a thing. <laughs> this quilt just is that. It is so low volume on the on and and then your colors. I'm going to say rainbow colors but in such that cottage that cottage look um it's just it's so super sweet thank you thank you yeah I always want a quilt to look like it maybe it's been around for a little bit longer yes when I see the signature down here by my hand and I see your initials and the year do uh -huh. you do that on all of your quilts I don't I'm I'm terrible at that and um, I, um, I, I've been shamed by people and, and rightly so. <laughs> um, Moda even had us design um, signature things to sign on the back and they made panels of it that, 
And I, I thought, well, maybe, oh, I designed one and that was fun. Did I keep it up? No, I will end up probably using a, uh, uh, a marker, um, like a Sharpie or something that won't wash out. And I end up writing on the back of my quilt, which is tacky. It's, you know what? It's better than nothing. Um, I went through yeah. that with my own grandmother that I grew up with quilts. Didn't think, didn't think a lot about it when I became a member of the American quilt study group mm -hmm. and started learning more about history and documentation and understanding that every quilt does have a story to tell. Right, exactly. But if you can't talk to the quilt maker, you can't hear the story. Yeah. And, and all sorts of things. And so I started asking my grandmother to document quilts and she did a little bit of everything because there were a lot of quilts and mm -hmm. you know what a pigma pen was fine because when I turned that quilt over and at least I see M more in a year right. I at least have some piece of information that I you know I had know about that quilt I might have that that's pretty much what they've got good. you're good yes that's better <laughs> than nothing and you probably have a lot of other things written down now should we go back to the beginning of this slideshow sure okay and let's and tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here so those are, um, this was, a, <laughs> this was a, okay. So this, this kind of came about by necessity. Um, one of my earlier collections with Moda, I had sent in um, everything and I, I prepare my fabrics. I do all of the color separations and everything. So they're ready for the mill and they kind of have to work on um, uh, the repeats of getting them because they have to be certain sizes for certain, however they're going to do it. Well, I had turned um, the, the main floral on one of those. I had, it was about this big and it was hydrangeas, which is my favorite flower. And so it was about this big, that floral little thing. And it came back this big when I got my strike offs, tiny, tiny. So it was a decision of pull the line, let them redo it, or just have a line that has a lot of tiny, small things. And I could do I was talking with Moda and it's like, I could do a whole bunch of like little miniature quilts. And they're like, oh, that would be great. <laughs> so I did a little booklet called Bespoke Littles and the fabric was called Bespoke Blooms. I changed the name and everything. And so this is, this is just a little stack of that, that little bow tie quilt over there that you see tucked under is six inches. That's six by six inches. So these wow. are all tiny little quilts that are a lot of fun to make. And, um, I keep saying I'm going to put them up and do a display with them, but mostly they just kind of st get stacked and displayed that way. <laughs> well, they're awfully cute. They're awfully Thanks. cute. And that's fun to know how small, like perspective wise, I would have, yeah, I could have thought tiny. that these are little, they're very little, they're very little, but they're oh, fun. Oh, very cute. Okay. All right. So, let's see. oh, I hold on a minute. I see what I did. Hold on. There we oh, go. There you okay. Go. So there's my little stack of them. Yeah. That's just more of the same of those. Yeah. Okay. I think the largest okay. quilt in that little booklet is 24 by 24. That's the big quilt in that booklet. Wow. And the rest are all and, smaller. And there are some people like we talk about this all the time. I have a, a former staff member friend. And one time one of my daughters said, who would ever use this small piece of fabric? <laughs> yeah. And I, we all immediately said, Beth, you know, Beth would be the one who would love to work and do all those kinds of the small tinies. pieces. I appreciate the, the tiny work in all of that. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. I'm trying, trying to, right. There you this go. Just, looks like a sample of, of some of your embroidery. Yeah, that was part of a quilt that was, again, an applique quilt, but also there's an embroidery version. It's called Floy's Garden and um, Stitching Floy's Garden. And that's part of the, and that one of my grandmas is Floy. And when, we're, when we would visit her on the farm, um, on their farm in, in Southern Illinois, um, we always knew we were at grandma and grandpa's farm because of my grandma had a flower garden right as you, off right on the road. You knew it was their barn. It was their farmhouse because the garden, it was a big triangle garden. And so this is, this pattern is called Floy's garden. And that's just, you know, that's part of the fun part is just getting to sit and stitch. Just and do you like, do you like to always use a hoop? For embroidery, mostly I do, not all the time. Um, Kathy Schmitz and I have had discussions with that because she doesn't use a hoop at all. Mm -hmm. And I don't use a hoop when I cross stitch. 
And she's like, going, you should try it then. You should really try it. And so I'm like, okay. But yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay, let's see here. This next, oh, I apologize. Okay, there we go. There you go. On the now here, and I have, you know what? So this is another one. This one is called Hope Blooms. And um, this is a this is an applique quilt. Here's the, I don't know if you can see, there's gonna be a glare. Yeah, I, we can see it. Yep. There you go. So this is this is the applique of of Hope Blooms, and this is fun. It's it's sitting over there in my behind my dining room. I mean my living room sofa there, and and that's another one where after several years, I, I have to make sure I have this the right way. I don't think I do. Here we go. It turned into a cross stitch. Oh my. <laughs> So how sweet. So yeah, so that's and that's something I'm hoping to do with more of my patterns. I've had people ask um, because when they find out I do do, you know, chart cross stitch and I've only done one of the cross stitch um, markets, but um, I want to do more of turning them into cross stitch because cross stitch is for me now. It's how I like to spend my downtime. And it's really nice when you're a designer getting to work on something that you didn't design yourself. So yeah. that's kind of my, but I'm hoping to do more of that. But yeah, that, and I think there's probably, I think you have a photo of this one in process, but that okay, one was so called Hope Blooms. Okay, I see. All right, somehow I keep, when I click these, all right, there we go. And that's from my latest um, fabric collection that's called Grace. And it's kind of what I love to call the, the baby sister of Ambleside. Um, Ambleside was my first collection with Moda. It did, it did really well. And that was such a blessing. But I, you know, when I've, you get, and I know you probably get asked this too, of like, I'm looking for this. Do you have this? And it's a fabric collection that's, you know, seven years old. And it's like, oh, no. So finally, after several years, I decided, and um, it's the one that, came out, when did it finally come out? I think it finally arrived in January. It was supposed to be here last August, but um, it sat out on the, off the California coast for several months. Say with lots of other fabric that's, you I know, was waving has... every time the news would show the cargo ships out there. I'm like, hi, Grace, we'll see you soon, hopefully. So that's, that's well, it's beautiful. One of the coast. And it's named Emmy. That's named after my little girl here, my little pup. That is awesome. And Grace is still, I mean, it's in the store and you sell it also on your website. Yes. Correct? Yes. I have, I so do have people. Grace. Yes. Okay. And all right. So let me see here now. I don't, I don't carry the fabrics, the, the yardage. Okay. I'll have pre-cuts and sometimes bundles of things, but I, I, I let the yardage for the most part go to quilt shops, bless their hearts. Yes. Yes, and I'm sorry to say we do not happen to have that one here, um, but your, your fabrics are beautiful. It's so around. thank you. No, yes. I, these guys can't carry everything. Oh goodness. Oh, sakes. I wish I could. I wish I could. <laughs> I could, you know. But anyway, okay. What's this quilt? This one is called. What is this one called? This one is called. Uh, plant. Well, that's okay. You you. To, I think it's interesting. I'm going to call it the wrong name, and uh, that, well, isn't that sad? I like that you combine piecing, like the hourglass, I call it an hourglass block. Hourglass, yeah. Um, and then, but yeah, then you have these applique details, the little, um, the little like the, the curves um, on the, what, what, I don't know if that's the inner border, if that's what you call, and then the, the applique the yeah. So, you know, being a Moda designer, we try, and that's a that's what I call a layer cake quilt. And so it's mostly just a layer cake background fabric and a, you know, the maybe a little extra green and a little extra red, maybe. I can't even remember for um for the cornerstones, but we I try to once in a while design so that it works, you know, either with a layer cake or a jelly roll or something like that. Cause people do ask and it's it's a good stretch. It's a good stretch. Is the pattern called Fresh Picked? Thank you. Holy cow. Good thing we got people, we got people looking out for us. Wow. <laughs> I was gonna got, I got helpers. Completely there you else. Go. Oof. It's hey, that's quite all right. Okay, let's look. Let's because there's some beautiful quilts here. I love this one. It looks 
I'm going to say it's a variation um, of a log cabin or it a is. log cabin style. And, right. And exactly. just, it's gorgeous. Right? Thank that's you. It's, gorgeous. it's a, it's a fun one. And that's, you know, that's a jelly roll quilt. So no, and it's fun. I, you know, I, I never was one of the using the pre-cut thingies, <laughs> thingies. That's the official language, um, the pre-cuts. And, but when I do, and when I finally started doing it, they are so much fun. And mm -hmm. it's like going, oh, thank you for have, cutting that for me that I don't have to, to do that. So, and jelly rolls, I, I, I don't know how it is for you, Jelly rolls, when, when I design a jelly roll quilt, it is always one of the best sellers. And so uh, people like having those pre-cut for them. <laughs> um, absolutely. I mean, again, we, we're small enough here that we don't have, we have fat quarters, um, yeah. but we cut them all ourselves okay, and bundle yeah. all of our own. So like when you see a fat quarter bundle that's sitting here, like it's, it's our own version of a fat right. quarter bundle. Uh -huh. Um, and so, uh, we always encourage people to use like the stripology ruler right, and that exactly. kind of thing, because it, it is fun to work with something that's all the same size of strips and yeah. whether they're in a pre-cut or you have to make your own pre-cut, it still right. works wonderful. It does. Yeah. And you yes. can use scraps. I mean, that's the other thing. If it's a jelly, just so you guys know, if it says jelly roll friendly or something, you can make that from scraps you have, and they don't have to be the full width and they will always work in a jelly roll quilt. Always. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's, keep, let's go on to the next. Oh, that's, that's the this is your cross that's, stitch. That's the cross stitch. That's the hope blooms cross stitch. And that's just amazing. I've done cross stitch and, and I can see the detail. Like what size cloth is that? I'm sorry, you broke up. Oh, I was gonna say we froze there, sir. What the detail on this cross stitch is beautiful. Thank you. What, like what size is this? That linen is, um, it's the smallest I'll work on. It's a 40 count linen. So it's, it's, it's tiny, you know, it's the linen is tiny, but I do it over two and I use one strand of thread. And so, and yes, I have to have a lit mic, um, I, that was one of the tools that I have picked up in the last few years of is the little um, uh, it, magnifier with the light. Oh, it makes it so much. They, it feels like it's huge. And when you take it out from looking at it for real, you're like going, oh my gosh, that's tiny. Because it felt like oh, you were sure. just doing something real big. But yeah, so that's on a and, 40 count. And there's another detail. That's beautiful. There you go. That's the in process. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course we saw this quilt. And then the last quilt I that is on this particular slide show, I think is also just stunning. Thank you. And, and it kind of looks like, I mean, I'll say watery going in between. Mm -hmm. It's a little more contemporary, yet it's still very yeah. cottagey. Yeah. It's always going to, if you're going to use my fabrics, it'll end up looking soft no matter what it is. Um, that was with a, that was with a collection I did called Dover and um, the White Cliffs of Dover. And so if you look at it at the top, it's supposed to be kind of the sky. And then there's a layer of green grass at the top of the cliffs. And then the, the, my gray is kind of the cliffs. And then it goes into the white drop of the cliffs of Dover. And then you have at the bottom, it goes blue again as for the, where the ocean meets up. And so that's what that was designed for. And of course, using my favorite block, a nine patch. And, um, and I actually, and so that fabric again, it's like, where do I find it? And it's kind of gone. Um, Moda did reprint that collection, which was really exciting because that rarely happens. And, um, but they said, you know, hey, Brenda, why don't you do a follow up to Dover? And so I'm like going, OK. And so that's actually the one that it's going to be here. OK, this is don't tell don't tell anybody. OK, OK, I won't. I won't tell anybody. Oh, now, hold on. Let's get the screen. I'm going to hold on. A minute. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing here. OK, now let's get the screen a little better. That way the screen's a little okay. bigger. OK, now what is it you so don't, don't want me to Because I'm, I'm not supposed to show anybody anything until next month. I thought it was next week, but it's next month. So don't anybody say anything. So here we go. 
So this is the follow-up. So I've added a little bit of a yellow colorway, and this is called the Shores. And so that will be shown to shops next month and will be here, we hope, next fall. <laughs> but I've recolorized that quilt because that quilt, so that pattern was like the bestseller of two years ago. And so I've recolorized that quilt. So for shop sake, cause it's like help them sell the fabric. And so, so that oh, one has that. been recolorized. I, I should have, I, if I was thinking Hi, Heidi, I would have sent you a picture of it, but I don't, I, I think I've already broken the rules. <laughs> nobody here is going to share anything. So I just, all got, and I just third. got that the other day. And so I just got it in the mail. And so it's like, I will not in the mail, but it just arrived on my doorstep. And so it's like, Oh, yay. I bet. Um, I bet it is just so exciting to see those new fabrics come. I mean, that has it got is. to be super exciting. And what's funny is because you kind of, well, at least for me, I can't speak for all designers, but I know for me, especially now with, with COVID and everything slowing things down and, you know, things being delayed. Grace was delayed. Cottage Linen Closet was delayed. It's just out in the pre-cuts, just got moved back. They're not even going to be here till May. So that's kind of, oh, bless them. But Moda is doing, and I know all distributors, our fabric manufacturers are moving up deadlines so that we're working on things sooner so that there's more of a lead time that they can have to try and get them in. And so our deadlines have tightened up and I'm kind of, you kind of forget, I, I forget what it looked like because I'm so busy working on the next one, which I have been. So I kind of have right now out in the shops, just in the shops, coming to the shops and what's in process with strike offs is four different collections. And so I'd forgotten what this all looked like together. And I was like going, oh. <laughs> and I, I our time. I can't even believe Brenda what? that we're almost to the top of the oh hour. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I told you that it would go fast and yeah, all that, but it, it just, it goes so fast. And there's so many different questions that I, like, I want to ask, like, what comes first? Do you see the, the quilt pattern? And then you go, you know what? I could design this piece of fabric to go in that quilt pattern. Or do you, or do you see the fabric and then you go, oh, I know exactly what pattern I want to design. Yeah. Which, you know, the, the court, the horse and the cart, which comes I first? I mean, and the answer does it is, go both and, ways. Yeah. It, it, the answer is yes. It goes both ways. So a lot of times it's the fabric and it'll then inspire the quilt design. This collection that I'm working on now, it's a little bit different for me. Some new, little, it's still soft, but it's soft in a specific color venue. And I have, des I have ideas of what I wanna do with a quilt. It actually made it more complicated going through strike offs because I have in my head what I need to use. And so we've been working, Moda has been awesome in really working on let's get this right. Let's get it exactly what you want and let's get it exactly what will work. So normally I don't have to go back and forth with strike offs this time, we're, you know, but you know, I, I'm blessed to be with an incredible company that will go the extra mile. So isn't, isn't that awesome? I'm a blessed oh, girl. Yes, you are with all <laughs> of your beautiful quilts and fabrics. It's, it's wonderful. And I want to um, make sure that I say your website name again. Sure. It is Brenda riddle designs.com. I know it's in the, um, in the comments and I'm sure we'll put it in the comments again. Okay. Um, Jamie will do that for me, but, uh, certainly would encourage, um, everybody to go to, you know, Brenda. And if I start to hear my customers say, we need more Brenda Riddle in the store. I'm going to, I'm going to know uh, that we did a good job tonight. Um, Yay, what, thank you. what you have and everything. Cause it is, it is very beautiful, Brenda. Thank you so much. So, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Yeah. We could have, oh my gosh. I want to ask you about your sewing room. Okay. So I got to ask just, we got, we got five minutes. Okay. Tell me, <laughs> tell me where, where do you sew? Do you have a room designated? Are you a kitchen table kind of girl? You know, is, I, I started off, I started off in a dining room. Um, I have, I've been in my home now for this is 22 years. And I had a designated room in the back for a sewing room and office. And then once I started designing fabric and all, 
And my parents both moved in when I bought, when I built this house, they, they came and which was needed and it was wonderful. So I had the back room, it's right off of the family room, what set up the family room. Well, after my mom passed away in 2007, the family room quit being used very much. My dad would use it the most, but he has his own, he was in the suite. And so he, and there's a sitting area and he just more and more used that. So after a little while, I've now taken over the, the, uh, um, the uh, family, family room, room is now my studio and the office is the office and storage area. And so I've kind of taken over, you know, the house. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. And every room is a display room. I'm now taking over furniture that I was going to get rid of. And it's like, Brenda, they're glass fronted. You need quilt storage. So I have some things I were literally going to get rid of. And, and I thought, no, this is perfect. Why should they be under the bed? You know? So yep. every, every room literally either has a ladder or two with quilts hanging off of it, or what was the China cabinet now is filled with quilts. And what was the little display piece over there is now filled with quilts. What is your favorite tool or gadget or thing that you love to use when you're quilting? Probably, oh, wow, there's so many. You know, the one that I'm just over the moon about is the little thimble pad, um, thimbles, the little leather circles that stick to your finger. Yes. I love those. They're the smallest little thing and they just, just life-changing for me when I'm binding and when I'm doing needle, you know, when I'm doing applique. So you don't end up with holes in your holes. Oh in your yeah. Thumb. I used to have a really bad callus right here and it's you can hardly tell that it's there now so that's you know it's a tiny little thing and tiny little leather sticky things interesting and are they they're actually leather like i've seen a couple of different ones but they're leather they're well, little they're suede. leather they're like a suede a suede yeah okay. mm -hmm. yeah and so they're thick enough that the needle can't poke that's when you know to change either all the sticky runs off or it actually, I've gotten to the point where my needle will start going through them. It's like, okay, time for a new one. But they come on, Very you good. know, they, you get like a dozen in your little pack, so. Oh, I'm gonna have to check that out. Is there a particular oh, brand that you use? It's just called Thimble Pad. I think it's made by Colonial. I think, okay. but it's called Thimble Pad. Thimble Pad, I love all right. Them. I'm gonna have to search that out. So I have to definitely search that out. Oh, well, Brenda, this has been lovely. And uh, like I said, it's like a conversation, a, just a creative conversation in our living room well, and you. getting to know you a little better and um, getting to share every the beautiful things that you do with our customers uh, here at Hen and Chick Studio, as well um, as anybody else that is watching on um, our Facebook tonight. Well, so well, thank you. So thank you very much sure. all right, for joining thank us. You. Bye, guys. All right. Well, with that, we will wrap up this evening and hope that all of you uh, enjoy being creative and hope you are inspired to, to maybe make something with a cottage theme in the next few weeks or something. <laughs> all right, everybody. Good night. Bye.